Percy gave a ghostly whistle. Don't be frightened, Thomas, he laughed. It's only me. Your ugly fizz is enough to frighten anyone, said Thomas. Nine times out of ten, Thomas and Friends characters have a basis that's pretty easy to follow. For example, Thomas is an E2 tank engine, Gordon is an A1 Pacific, Steven is Stevenson's rocket. Normally, it's pretty easy to keep up with. However, not all Thomas and Friends characters or engines share this privilege. It's known that Audrey cared a lot about the details of his stories, and because of this, disagreements between him and his illustrators were not unheard of. Audrey would often get quite upset at inconsistencies, and honestly, how can you blame him. It's his story. In the story of Percy the Small Engine, probably the character most notorious in this aspect, because of such, has always been interesting to me. I mean, personally, I always found it hard to come down on what exactly Percy was, and unfortunately, the Railway series doesn't do a lot to help. Neither does the show or anything else that introduces Percy. He's just a small engine. A small saddle tank engine. But that's honestly kind of vague. So today I thought it'd be fun to not only look at the strange history of Percy, but try to figure out exactly what Percy is, even though there's not really a specific answer. There are many ideas though, and little inklings that we can use to get a general idea. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Starting with one of the earliest issues Percy would face, his illustration controversies. Between Reginald Dalby and the Reverend W. Audrey, Percy was a major source of friction. Reginald Dalby was the first illustrator of the Railway series, and Audrey would constantly complain that Percy didn't look like a real locomotive in his illustrations. Audrey was especially upset, as he had actually built a model of Percy for him to reference. However, as you can see here, they definitely don't look necessarily the same. And again, this really upset Audrey. And all of this would finally come to a head with Percy the Small Engine's book. Audrey would actually write to Dalby requesting that he should make Percy look less like a green caterpillar with red stripes. The sentence was this, I beg, pray, and exhort you not to make Percy look like a green caterpillar with red stripes. Insulted by this, Dalby resigned from the Railway series. Subsequent illustrators would modify the design to make Percy look a little bit more typical, a lot more like an industrial locomotive. The television series, however, would utilize his original design. The phrase, a green caterpillar with red stripes, even resurfaces in a later story known as Woolly Bear, in which Thomas uses it as an insult to Percy. Thomas, you're like, ugly indeed, I'm... A green caterpillar with red stripes, continued Thomas firmly. And eventually, amends were made between Audrey and Dalby. So now we know all about the controversy of Percy, but what about the origins of Percy? Well, in a general outline, Percy is a fairly typical British industrial shunting locomotive. His bunker is quite unusual for an 040 shunter. Most shunters don't actually have a bunker, but presumably this was added to allow him to travel greater distances, you know, without refueling. Not even in the TOS book does it state where Percy is from, but according to the book Troublesome Engines, he was bought by the fat controller at an engine workshop. Percy was originally needed to shunt at the main station, as the tender engines being Gordon, Henry, and James had protested about having to do it themselves. As such, Percy was bought for the railway. Audrey would consider it essential that his railway stories would be as realistic as possible. To this end, most of his locomotive characters were based upon real things. However, Percy was designed before that policy came into effect, so Percy would actually end up getting a bit of leverage. Percy's actual history within the fictional universe is largely unknown, as he doesn't precisely match any real locomotive design. He is, as Audrey puts it, of obscure origins. However, he does bear a strong resemblance to several designs of the 040 tank locomotives built by Avonside Engine Company. And so, Audrey stated that Percy had probably begun as one of these, but of course had an extensive rebuild. He is quoted with saying, Fitters at Crovin's Gate have found components made by Hunslet and other manufacturers, when concerning Percy and his origins. Unfortunately, that leaves us in a bit of a blank spot. Even Audrey himself didn't have a direct answer for what exactly Percy is. There's only really a general idea. And for those wondering, this is the general idea. This is apparently what it's thought that Percy started out as. And I mean, honestly, the resemblance is there. When you look at Trojan, you can definitely see Percy. However, you can say this with a lot of other locomotives, honestly most O4Os. For example, now let's take a look at a Pug. It is worth noting, however, that Pug actually exists in the Railway series as his own character. You can see him here, and honestly he looks more like this than he does Percy. Yes, the Pug has a a resemblance to Percy, but again, most O4O shunters are going to. I also would like to mention that Percy has met Pug before, and not once have they been referred to as brothers or relatives, and we know that sort of thing is at least somewhat common with locomotives that share that, as we see it with Tally Klin and Skarloey, and Dolgach and Reneas. So if there was some sort of relationship there, I feel like it would have been played up on. So if Percy could equally be any of these, what is Percy? What did Audrey want us to see when we look at Percy? Well, 
in my opinion, Percy can be whatever you want him to be. And honestly, that's one of the things that I really appreciate about the character. It's great that Thomas is an E2. It's great that Gordon's an A1 Pacific. It's great that a lot of characters have concrete bases, but it's arguably more fun when you can kind of do it yourself. And in the terms of Percy, you really don't have a choice but to do just that. Without having an actual basis, Percy becomes whatever you want him to be. You could go exactly with what Audrey said. He likely started as an Avonside 040 and was then extensively rebuilt. You could say he was a pug that was rebuilt. Heck, you can say he's just about anything. All we know for sure is that Crobin's Gate, they found components by Hunslet and other manufacturers. Who were those other manufacturers? We don't know. For all we know, some of those parts came from Vulcan Foundry or Horwick Works, and maybe at some point Percy was a pug. We don't know, and technically no answer is actually wrong. So, what should the conclusion for all of this be? Like I said, that's up to you. Percy can be whatever you want him to be. And the wonderful part about it is, one, you can't technically be wrong, and two, being Percy, it's always going to be adorable. And hopefully this was able to put some of your guys' questions on Percy to rest. Having this knowledge helped me come down on what I want my Percy to be, and hopefully it can do the same with you guys. If you can't be wrong, you're kind of already winning from the start. And with all this talk about Percy today, I'll go ahead and announce this as well. As a lot of you guys know, I am currently working on my own version of Percy. You know, if Percy's not going to have an actual basis, you know, I'm going to have some fun with that and make my own Percy. And that's kind of what I've set out to do. He will be revealed soon. I'm trying to take my time with it though, because I want this to be one of my better models. So expect more on him very soon. Honestly, probably this week. And if you guys enjoyed the video or are interested in seeing something like that, be sure to like and subscribe since there's always more trade stuff on the way. As always, thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.